<laughs> it's happening at some point. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are good. All right, are we, are we yeah, good? Yeah, I got the bikes thing. So. <laughs> oh, did you actually start? You guys are like laughing, and it's really good. <laughs> All right, so that's, you... that's the best answer oh, ever. Yeah, I'm yeah. Todd. I don't even think I introduced myself at the beginning of the last video. Yeah, I, I, I said your name. People know who you are. Okay. You're like local celebrity, right? No, not at all. All right, so Todd, Aaron, uh, we're here to talk about uh, Android Netrunner's uh, newest data pack, the Blood and Water uh, from the Water Cycle. And uh, we're doing the corpse side now. Uh, there is a runner video. Check that out, um, or not, if you want. If you just, not the boss you. If you just want to hear about corpse stuff, then yeah, just corpse stuff. So let's uh, take it away. All right, Boroid Tracker. It's a uh, Haas Byroid. Um, it's a Byroid upgrade. Where a runner crashes one little card to attack in the server, including the Warhead Tracker, price four. If successful, runner must crash two of his installed cards. I love this card for multiple reasons. <laughs> this card's art is sick, uh, for one. Uh, it's two influence, so um, I could see this in, in uh, any color deck, quite honestly. I love Trace Four. Uh, and four to trash. Less, uh, and I can't wait till Wizard's gone because that's less of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, then this is this is just a great great card. Yeah, no, it's it's awesome. Um, I uh, I've got a Gagarin deck that uh, runs uh, encryption protocol and hostile element structure, and I don't know if I have the influence, but it would be hilarious to put this in here as well. Yes, it would, and you might be able to find that influence. If yeah, it's so motivated. Yeah, because like the, all those things together just make it. Yeah. Impossible trash unless you have imps or things like that. Yeah, there was a couple of cards in the runner review that we did that made me excited, uh, but there's a lot in this corp yeah. that made yeah. me very excited to go out and build some new decks. And this is one of them for sure. It definitely. And the uh, insert is all about these uh, Warroid. Okay, I haven't read it yet. I always, I like to read them. You know, they're cool. And so yeah, it's about it's uh, the progress on these Warroid. Um, you know, trackers. Yeah, going out trying to keep the clans. Yeah, and how they're so much more efficient than everything else they've tried in Mercs and things like that. Seventy eight more, seventy eight percent more effective than all that stuff. So. Wow. Well, that's an amazing that's, benchmark. Yeah, exactly. All right. So next up, we've got Loki, which um, I always like things talking about Loki. Um, so when the runner encounters Loki, choose another rest piece of ice until the end of the run. Loki gains the subtypes of that ice and all the subroutines of that ice before all of Loki's other subroutines. And then Loki's one subroutine is end the run unless the runner shuffles his or her grip into the stack. So this is just this is mean. And at six there's rest no subroutine cost, on this, or there's no subtype. It's no, just no, thyroid. No. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, because he grabs subtypes right. from another. Exactly. Okay. Duh. Um. So it, if he's the only res piece of ice, only AI could interact with him. There you go. Um. He's a by road that you can't click through. Correct. Uh. And he's just mean because you can grab some nasty piece of ice and just be like, "Well, this is happening now." Yeah. In fact, uh, looking at the fact, there's his inter interaction with cell portal is amazing. His cell, cell portal is the one that. Uh, you encounter it, uh, if you don't break the subroutine, you get sent back out to the front of the stack, or the front of the uh, server, and you have to run it again, because you're now encountering the outermost piece of ice. Uh, normal cell portal dereses itself, and it's six or eight, I think, to res. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's not cheap. Um, I might be wrong on the cost, but uh, because Loki is not cell portal, he mm -hmm. does not dereses. Correct. So they hit him the once, he gains, you know, you grab the cell portal, thing and then when they encounter him again he still has that subroutine but you can also give him another piece of ice because it's a new encounter it's a new encounter during oh, the same wow. run so it, yeah. it's so just, there's no reason to do it again you just jack out yeah yeah well if you couldn't break him the first time then yeah you, yeah, you should you, just you, run away yeah, but yeah. Uh, effectively again, protects your servers and that's what we want ice to do in this game at least that's how it was designed yeah <laughs> yeah so um I'm excited about this. Five influence, uh, so pretty much. Oh yeah, this is just Hospital Road, or maybe a one of. Um, he is unique, so one of in a deck would make sense yeah, as well. But that's okay. five influence is steep. 
That, but, you know, and I, I didn't even think of that. That's true. I have, how much unique ice is there? Uh, this is some of the the Grail ice, I think Excalibur. Yeah, is, that's the only thing um, that I can think of that would be like that, where you can only have one of that card as active. ice. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Um, that's that that really changes it a bit. Yeah, I mean, you can put three in the deck to try and get it because you need it, you want it, um, but you would want it. You'd want it early. Oh well, uh, if, even if he's in the front, that's true. It's not bad either. Like, it's true. Then use your front load stuff and hopefully drain the runner of their resources up front. Correct. So yeah, that's true. And then uh, you might know uh, you might have a much better idea which server you want to put this guy onto. Yeah. Later game. Okay. Yeah, see what they're they're running. Yep. Oh. <laughs> uh, I've heard this card referred to as the big baby. Um, <laughs> Uh, Obokata Protocol. I'm um, not butchering that too much. Um, oh, it's pretty good. It's a five advancement, three point agenda. Um, it's an ambush agenda. As initial cost of steel, Ob Obokata. Obokata? Yeah, thank you. Protocol, runner must suffer four net damage. Um, so it's like Fetal AI. Although I think Fetal AI, you just take the net damage for, for encountering it, not to steal it. Um, but this, I, this is like an APD, uh, or, yeah, where you have to pay the four to, yeah, four to steal, to steal it. it. Uh, you have to pay four net damage to steal this. And um, proper application of stress can create the most profound changes. Yeah. Ten so, Institute. Uh, this is something that Bug Out Bag uh, helps deal with. Um, Correct. But if you want to run a Jinteki Black Tree, uh, this is going in there. This thing can kill. I mean, just I mean, you don't steal it. Like so, you know, Film Critic is a thing with this card for sure. Oh yeah, no, that's that's a good point. Yeah. Um, whereas fetal AI, they 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 encounter it, so they take the damage. I think. I... Correct. He's, it's it's all about stealing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, the account the encounter ends as soon as you say you're putting it on on film critic. I can go back to the. We're not going to deal with it. Well, film critic definitely episode. avoids this. I just I don't know that. It, yeah, I'm not sure if it does or not. That's but, something for another thing. We'll um, look that up later. But still. Uh, you're gonna see this a lot of Jinteki. Oh yeah, this is it, this is classic. It's self-protecting. It, yes, it's mean. Um, well, actually, and Jinteki is all about that. It's, yeah, it's spiky. It's got spikes. Thorns. I think they would call them thorns. Well, that too. They're like a Russian olive. I hate those trees. All right, so uh, I'm gonna let you pronounce this one. Okay, cause... Mirage. That's how I was reading it. Yeah, yeah. Mirage. If the runner breaks the printed subroutine on Miraju, he or she is now running on archives instead of passing Miraju and approaches the outermost ice, if any, and then you dereg Miraju. This is a code gate. Um, it's two to res, zero strength. Um, the subroutine is the corp may draw a card and then shuffle one card from HQ into R&D. And the key word, like always, and that's one of the things that's beautiful about this game, they choose may. their words very carefully, and everyone is very important. Right. Well, and the, may draw a card and then shuffle a card. In the right. HQ. Also, the, the, the FAQ mentions that the uh, may it applies to both. The Correct. then doesn't mean you have to do one and then the other. It's just uh, implicating the order. Correct. So you may draw one or not, and then you may shuffle one in or not. Yeah, if you have nothing in your, your hand and you draw the card, you do not have to shuffle that one card back into the deck. You can keep it. Right. Uh, if you have no cards and you decide not to draw cards, you then can't shuffle anything back in because you have nothing. But um, two influence, um, I think it's you know two two to res is not super expensive. Um, it does de res if they do it, but it's a card draw. Otherwise, um, it it really puts a tough. It, it it could be a potentially tough decision for the runner. Do I want to just let them take a card and do some shuffling shenanigans, or do I want to break it and then I am I'm on, on archives. I'm on archives. So it's 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 a tough decision. You really don't want them to do either one. So if you're if you're uh, Th this card, I, I would love to be playing against a criminal that wants to hit HQ. Yeah. And if I can put two or three on HQ, then yeah. it just becomes funny to me. Yeah, if you so. can do that, then it, it may not work very well in in practice. But yeah, well, you know, play it and see how it does. I mean, I think it's yeah. a, I think it's a really good card. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, I'll uh, probably see that in a lot of Jinteki, possibly elsewhere as well. All right, so uh, looks like uh, Wayland's not the only one getting shipments anymore. Correct. Well, everybody's been getting shipments. 
Uh, yeah, I just um, when I hear shipment, I think Wayland because there's two or three shipments yeah. uh, that they get. But uh, so the shipment from Tevin. Uh, play only if the runner did not make a successful run during his or her last turn. Place two advancement tokens on one card. Um, it's cool. Uh, I mean, it. Um, two cost, three influence. Right. So it, you don't gain any efficiency. Uh, you know, it's two cost, and you only get two advancement. But it's only one click. Correct. So it's click impression. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, you can't play this first turn because there is no pass runner turn. Correct. Um, they are not successful or unsuccessful. Correct. Um, so you can't use it first turn. Correct. But uh, yeah, uh, that's that card. That's that card. Shipment. Free influence might be a bit much. Um, I think it is. But uh, I'd have to look at what the other shipments are. Um, I think yeah, I think three influence is going to keep this in mostly. I don't see unless you're doing something crazy like, um, you know, my daughter Abby plays and she has a Wayland deck that, that just is really heavy on advanceable ice. Maybe I could see it in yeah, that. Yeah. But with three influence, I just don't know. Yeah. I uh, I like the the title of this one. Escalate and, uh, vitriol. Uh, four uh, advancement and, uh, for two points. Four and two and NBN. Uh, click gain one uh, gain a credit for each tag the runner has. Use this ability only once per turn. That is kind of important to include. Yes. And uh, flavor text. Of course, words hurt. X Gleason. Right. And so, um, NBN loves tagging the runner. Uh, it's what they've always seemed to do, uh, and this is a great uh, economy for that. Yeah. Sure, you can only do it once per turn, um, but that would be per copy. So if oh. you score two, then you can do it twice in a turn. Yeah. Um, uh, it, I don't know. It seems like a no-brainer to throw in, um, as long as you don't mind the the two for four. I love the thematicness of this. Card. Oh yeah, uh, just... this goes with breaking news yes. or um, any of the other just like. Hey, we're media, and we're just going to talk yeah. horrible things about the runner, yeah. and you're going to believe it. We'll do it live then! Yeah, it, it also seems to be a bit of a tag on current uh, news and political. Oh, absolutely. So. Yes. And that, that's as far as we'll go into that discussion. <laughs> hey. Hey, that's... And a similar thing, yeah. re-education. Yeah. <laughs> so, five advancement, three-point agenda. Oh. When you score re-education, add any number of cards from HQ to the bottom of R&D, and draw that many cards. The runner randomly adds the same number of cards from his or her grip to the bottom of the stack, if able. Um, this, uh, I can see this being used uh, in NBN bag and tag, because it's an easy way to make the runner discard cards, and then, um, you know, uh, scorch earth, or... Yeah, it's uh, a. It's nice because you can then, you know, if you've got a bunch of agendas or something, you can flush that all and your uh, yeah. R and D, and then they're at the bottom, and uh, then you can also, like I said, kill the runner. Yes. So. Yes. Interesting. It's an uh, interesting agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and uh, thematically, it is is also. Oh fantastic. yeah. Yeah. They they nailed they nailed NBN thematics. I mean, I've never liked playing yellow, but no. These these actually these yeah. actually are like I might want to make a, okay. a, a yellow deck with these. I was gonna say they all, they feel right, which yeah. I mean they feel slimy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, traffic analyzer also going to be in. Um, it's an upgrade uh, zero res or uh, yeah zero res because it's an upgrade and uh, one influence three to trash. Yeah. Uh, too shabby. Whenever you res a piece of ice protecting the server, trace two, excess, su ah, if successful, corp gains one. Um, oh, money maker. Yeah, and so uh, another thing NBN is known for is the traces, and so um, you'll see currents and other things that uh, either help you pay for traces or make, there's one current that uh, you make the runner pay first. Yes. Um, and you know if they're if they're poor or if they just don't really care about you getting a credit, hey, it's a free credit for resin. Yeah, this so. is the, that's a great point to bring up too, and it makes me think that I was reading a discussion um, online recently about how it seems like currents just favor the runner so much. 
this is a card that synergizes well with that and I think can disprove that, you know, if, if you get creative with your currents as a corporation, you can make them work just as well for you. Oh, yeah. I think there's there's definitely a few currents that work well with certain uh, corps, mm -hmm. um, but there's no, like, um, employee strike or, well, I guess cerebral static is the, the corp well, mm -hmm. or it may not be that, but it's the blanks of the runner's box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of runners maybe don't need their box as much as the corp, so... Anyway, going off on a tangent, um, <laughs> it's good. Uh, One influence, know, and, man. This makes it a... Well, and if you put this on something that, like, if you use Chimera or something else that constantly is de-resing itself, yeah. um, this can help alleviate the cost of re-resing it. That's a great, and great, great point. Love it. It's an upgrade. Uh, I guess you could actually stack three of them on one server if you get all three of them. Yeah. Um, that would be irritating to deal with as the runner. Oh yes, no. This is this is a great yellow card that I could put in all of my non-yellow decks. Yep. Yeah. Or your yellow decks if you never you know stoop that low. Don't think I could do it. I think this card might be my favorite of the set, um, just thematically and uh, the flavor text is awesome. The flavor text, yeah. Um, so it is a five advancement, two point agenda. Meteor mining, which makes it kind of rough. Oh, but this actually makes sense for something else that we'll get to. <laughs> um, so when you score meteor mining, you may gain seven credits. If the runner has at least two tags, you can do seven eight damage instead. Because you're mining a meteor, and you can just apparently be like, "No, we're gonna target him." Boom. Yep. I've got a rock, Charles Mad Dog Brune, Comet Jackie. I hope I live long enough that Comet Jockey is a real do job description. Isn't that what you would call those people in Armageddon? I suppose. That horrible movie? Yeah. No, I want real Comet Jockeys, though. Yeah. So, yeah, Meteor Morning, a lot of fun. Standoff. Stand uh, Two advancement, zero <laughs> point agenda. Uh, so th this is useful on a lot of ways. Um, zero, zero point means that if you want to res Archer or... Yes, uh, which is all in faction. Yeah, any of the... Well, is Archer? Yeah, Archer is... Well, any, and then also, and then uh, what's the... Uh, I'm blank in the name, but it's the uh, Oaktown grid or something where you have to sacrifice an agenda to res it, five to trash, and then it just starts trashing resources. That's oh, uh, corporate town. Corporate, corporate town. town, that's right. Yeah, uh, so anything that you need to sack an, an agenda for... This is great. And when you score it, <laughs> when you score standoff, each player starting with the runner trashes one installed cards until one player declines to trash a card. What, notice what isn't said there, Aaron. Uh, it doesn't say your cards or your opponent's cards. You can trash any installed card you want. Yep. Um, and so the runner gets first swing, uh, but uh, if you're not running a Glacier deck, which uh, Wayland can do, yep. um, or if you just have a bunch of, you know, like ambush things that when they get trashed, they do nasty things. Yep. Um, or if you just really want to trash their rig and don't care about losing everything you have. Correct. Um, this will either force them to not continue to trash things and give you five credits or lose everything. Well, and then again, once again, going back to Corporate Town synergizing with this, you start trashing some things. Now you have it in here. You can res your Corporate Town and you can finish the job. Yep. You can really trash through yeah. so, a lot. This is mean. This is really mean. See, and it, um, it's yeah. a one-turn score automatically. Like it, it is pure Wayland, and that's what makes it just a great card. Yeah. Except, and it, it, it is sort of filler because it doesn't add your agenda point count, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, you, uh, zero point agendas are perfect. I mean, I love those for for that reason. It's like and this is easy. I know exactly what agenda. I am going to, and it's really great when they access a zero point agenda on an R and D. <laughs> they're like, "Hey, what I got the an hell?" Agenda. And it's just like, "Well, it sucks that now I don't have that to sacrifice." But you know, and it, you know, that's the other thing. I know you moved it off. But oh well, we can bring when back. you score standoff. When you oh, it's score, not steal. So it does score. Oh yeah, yeah. it's just score. So, but again, yeah. one turn score. Like yeah. you. That's right. Um, if you leave it installed and they score it, I it's, guess, it's oh the, well. It's the Wayland version of, um, the, uh, I used to run it way back when I first started and I had that Glacier deck, um, with Haas Byroid, the zero, um, zero point agenda. I, I'm yeah, blanking on it's, that. It's all right. No worries. 
Okay, success. This is what I all of a sudden I had a little spark that like this makes more sense of uh, in reference to the meteor mining. Yes. Um, so success. Uh, it's a triple operation, so it's your entire turn unless you. Um, I guess you could be hotspot road and have mandatory upgrades. But, yep. Uh, anyway, as an additional cost to play this operation, forfeit an agenda. So you have to forfeit an agenda first Four and minutes. spend two mm -hmm. clicks. Um, but uh, advance a card X times X equals the advancement requirement of the agenda just forfeited. So this would allow you to score another five point agenda that's worth more than the meteor mining. Mm -hmm. You know, you can swap out two for three, basically. Yep. Yep. Um, it takes a turn, but... Uh, well, it does, and then, but that also thinks of Jeeves. But Ooh, I, yeah. Jeeves would do this, too. But uh, I don't remember the influence cost of Jeeves, so I don't know. Uh, I think it's three. Okay. Um, so you could put a couple in the deck just for funsies. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, I think it's great but because, also, it is advancing a card X times. So your public agendas that every time you advance a card, their, their condition is going to trigger. So oh, yeah, got, that's kind of gross. If you got Hollywood, is it Hollywood? Which one is it that I'm thinking of that's uh, uh, every Hollywood time you, or Oaktown or... You, you advance it, and then you and can then, advance another one uh, every time you advance it. I think it. that's Hollywood. And yeah, that's if what it I was has saying. like six or more, then it double advances. Yeah, things. so like and that gets really sick and it's Titan going turbo all over. Yeah, well, and it, and it is important that it says advanced, not yes. just place it. Yes, so there, it makes it so it's. So yeah, um, initially I didn't see the point of success. I think I've come around to see uh, I, yeah, I, its value. I loved it. All right, now we're into the neutral zone. Um. Walper Reclamation. I like this because it's um, kind of similar to uh, the library or uh, Museum of History. Asset for um, corpse. Two influence. Neutral cards with influence. Crash one card from each queue. Add one card from archives to the bottom of R&D. Use this ability only once per turn. So you can get stuff out of your hand and then you can put stuff um, from archives into R&D. So if you want, you could take the card that you just trashed and put it directly in R&D. Correct. So, so it's a way to bury an agenda that you have nothing to do with yet early game. You can't do something with it. Or like, oh, I've got a bunch of biotic labor and I don't have the credits or anything to use them on. Yeah. I don't really want to throw them away. Right. Absolutely. Um, but I really need to get stuff out of my hand. Plus, when you have something that makes you shuffle your, your um, R&D, then it's it's just back into rotation. You don't know where it is after that. Well, yeah, this doesn't shuffle. This just no, I know. I'm just part. saying with another card ability. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. After you you know put a bunch of stuff on the bottom, and now you've got what you want. Use Jackson or something else, and now everything's back into the mix. The flavor text on this one's pretty cool too. Uh, boom. Is it Wampoa or Wampoa? Wampoa? Uh, Wampoa is the largest and meanest Earth-based mining concern on Mars. They put bodies and waste in the ground as fast as they pull the minerals out. Well, you got to backfill somehow. That's right. All right. Good point. And then mass commercialization. Um, so this is a operation transaction. Uh, there's a few other transactions, I think. Um, yeah. Ace hedge fund might be a transaction. Um, they're usually gaining money, which this one is. Uh, gain two credits for each card with at least one advancement token on it. Yes, I shared this with my daughter, Abby, once again, because of that Whelan uh, deck that she has with all the ice that she advances constantly. Uh, this is huge. I said, well, I know I'm not going to see these three cards again anytime soon. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, with that Garen deck, I use the Constellation Ice. Yep. Um, this, this could be an amazing windfall for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that also uses uh, Oak Town or Hollywood, whichever one is the double advance. Oh, yeah. So I, I <laughs> Gosh. Counters everywhere. You know, it's so nice that Wayland finally has something to make it money. Yeah, they needed more. Yeah, they that. needed that. Yeah. Although this isn't a Wayland card, but we keep using it for talking well, about Wayland decks. True. Uh, and it's also no, no influence, so it yeah. goes anywhere. They could go, go anywhere. So thanks again for watching. Uh, this is Aaron Todd from Collector Mania. Come down, play. Uh, Android or any other collectible card game on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Yep. Um, check out Facebook. Yeah, you might want to check out the Facebook first. We have uh, a living card games group too. That right, and that's the best way to know who's playing what, yep. when. Uh, you can and why. You can shout out and be like, "Hey, I really want to play some <laughs> Netrunner," and then people will be like, "Sweet, I'll be there," or "I won't be here this week. Maybe next week." You know.
Set things up. That never happens. You never say that. Oh, okay. Well. Bikes! <laughs>